Hello dear students, welcome to amazing world of science and uh, I am your science teacher. So today uh, we are going to continue with chapter 2 class 9 NCERT. So we already uploaded one session of chapter 2 is matter around us pure. Okay, so today we are going to continue with the remaining part of the lesson. Hope you all uh, read and um, uh, uh, the concepts are clear for you. We finished up to this session that is we have to start from what is the solution today. Okay, so now uh, we will continue with what is a solution. You see uh, we already learned about uh, homogeneous substance, heterogeneous substance and all in our last class. Okay, so today uh, we will see what is meant by solution. So, you know solution is nothing but it is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. So, there are various types of solutions in your daily life like you know you all drink soda, water, lemonade and uh, you know many such drinks and all are there. So, these are all examples of solutions you know it is watery liquid uh, in nature. Uh, so, normally uh, we think of a solution as liquid that contains either solid liquid or gas dissolved in it. But other than that, uh, you know, uh, there are also solid solutions like alloys. You know, what are alloys? Alloys are mixtures of different metals, okay, in uh, definite proportions. And uh, gaseous solutions, that is air, you know, different gases are mixed in air. Uh, that uh, in liquid form is gaseous solution. So, uh, solution, if you take, there is homogeneity at particle level. What is meant by homogeneity? See, if you take lemonade. Now, whatever part you taste from lemonade, it will be the same. No, in some places, you know, one taste will be more, some places it is less, it is nothing like that, it is uniform. Also, you see, if you take some sugar and dissolve that in water, you get a sugar solution, isn't it? So, if you uh, taste that sugar solution, it will be equally sweet. Every, wherever you taste it, it will be equally sweet, okay. So, uh, we can understand from this that particles of sugar or salt, even salt water, if you dissolve some salt in a cup of water and uh, stir it well and uh, so that the salt spreads and dissolves uniformly in water, we call that salt water, you know. If you taste it anywhere, it is same throughout, okay. Now, we will see what are meant by, uh, what are alloys. As I already said, alloys are mixtures of two or more metals. Uh, or a metal and a non-metal and they cannot be, once you uh, make an alloy, you cannot separate it into components by physical methods. But even though uh, that is the case, we say that uh, alloy is a mixture because you know whatever particles, you know you uh, mix different metals or non-metals or whatever it is, uh, the properties of those can be found in the alloys and uh, can have variable composition. See, you have all seen brass, you know, uh, you have seen like uh, vases and different uh, substances and vessels and all made of brass. So, what is brass? It is a mixture of 30 percent zinc and 70 percent copper, okay. Suppose for your exam, if they ask you, you know, what is brass, then you have to remember, uh, you, you can get it as MCQs or questions or match the following or anything. It is 30 percent zinc and 70 percent copper. If you mix these two substances in this given proportion, you get brass. Understood? Okay, now next uh, part, uh, see a solution has a, if you take a solution, what are the constituents of a solution? You know, solvent and solute as components, okay. And uh, what is a solvent and what is a solute? See, if you take some water, put some sugar in it, sugar is the solute and uh, water is the solvent and when you mix it and finally what you get we call it solution. So, solution means solute plus solvent and the component of the solution that dissolves the other component in it that is in larger uh, amount that is here in this case for sugar water, water is present in larger amount. So, we call that as a solvent, okay. Then the component of the solution which is dissolved in the solvent then present in lesser quantity that is called the solute, okay. So, the content or the substance uh, present in lesser quantity is called the solute 
and which is the component which is present in larger quantity or larger amount is called solvent. Let us see some examples so that this will become clear for you. See as I already said solution of sugar in water it is called solid in liquid. See solid is sugar and liquid is water. So, what is the solute here? Sugar is the solute and water is the solvent. Suppose you take some iodine in alcohol, ok, iodine it is violet in color and if you dissolve it in uh, water you call it tincture of iodine, ok, that is very common tincture. Here iodine is uh, solid and uh, iodine which is solid that is the solute and alcohol liquid is the solvent, ok. So, alcohol liquid is solvent and iodine solid is the solute, clear? Now, as I already said aerated drinks like uh, you know these are gas in liquid solutions which contains carbon dioxide gas as solute and water as solvent. See if you dissolve some carbon dioxide in uh, liquid or water that is aerated drink normally soda water and all that you know that is uh, uh, that uh, type of solutions are called uh, you know gas in liquid ok where gas is the solute and the water is the solvent ok. There are different types of solutions ok and uh, here see as we already said uh, air that is a mixture of gas in gas that is a homogeneous mixture you know, so many gases are there in air but main two constituents of air are oxygen 20 percent and nitrogen 78 percent and there are other gases also which are present in air in very small quantities fine so many other gases are there other than oxygen and nitrogen water vapor you know different components are there that we will do it in another session. What are the properties of a solution? See first of all solution is a homogeneous mixture it is you know uniform throughout everywhere that is called homogeneous and the particles of a solution it is very small that is 1 nanometer 10 raised to minus meter in diameter ok. So, you cannot see by naked eye since it is very small we cannot see that at all and it is a very small particle size. So, what happens due to that they do not scatter light beam passing through the solution. So, the path of light is not visible in the solution. See if you pass light through the solution see the particles are small if they are little more larger they can scatter the light and you can see the path of the light. Here in this case you cannot see that and finally, the solute particles cannot be separated from the mixture by filtration because the solute particles do not settle down when undisturbed. And normally you see suppose you put some sand or something in water after some time you can see that the sand will settle down under the you know vessel. So, then you can remove the top part which is a filtrate, but here in this case for homogeneous solution these are distributed uniformly throughout. So, we cannot uh, separate the solute and the solvent particle because solute will not settle down and uh, if left undisturbed fine. I hope uh, you uh, find this much whatever we learnt uh, very clear and uh, as I always say you keep uh, learning little by little because I got uh, feedback from some mothers that the, uh, they when they ask their children to study and uh, whatever I post it uh, the same day they postpone it saying that they will learn it some other day because that is not the proper way to do every day whichever day I post the lesson you uh, revise it that day itself. Ok, do not keep the portions together and learn it at a later stage that will leave you confused, understand. I hope uh, you all will find this session useful and easy and thanks for all your feedbacks and uh, uh, suggestions and do keep uh, uh, sharing, liking and subscribing to our channel Amazing World of Science and we will be uploading another session soon. Thanks for watching.